to that position. It connects, where are we? It connects this plate on the bottom with the long finger here, which completes a connection, which then goes through this resistor, which um, I'm guessing just modifies the output of the light meter. So this all along in here, this little channel with little bits of paint kind of gluing it in, is that thin copper wire that uh, is attached to this end cap that you don't want to don't want to break off but if you did it wouldn't be impossible to replace you just have to figure out the proper gauge and resolder it to this resistor here and uh, carefully thread it back through the little groove that's there so I'm gonna slide out the filter and I can see through this little hole already that the tiny not tiny but the thin shutter blade is crushed and collapsed right through that little hole let's see let's see what's going on it looks like a piece of aluminum foil all crumpled up so what seems the story I've stories I've heard is when these blades are sliding back and forth, if something goes wrong, you take this arm here and you mash it in, and they just get crumpled into nothing. And that seems to be the case on this thing. So this needs new shutter blades. It's just a matter of if I'm going to do that or not. I probably will. I like these things. So to get the shutter blades out... Come on. Come on, come on, come on. All right. I think done this before, but I've only done it once. All right, I'm going to pause this and, and figure out what I need to do. Oh, well. Yeah, I'm going to pause it. Okay, so what's holding me up is I remembered that and these two holes, I think one of them has the screw holding down this copper housing that holds the blades. And I mean, from, I've been messing it up a little worse than it was, but I don't know if you can even see it. In here, these are the two, these were the two shutter holding pins or release pins uh, poke out and the, the little tabs were all crunched up in there. And this hole right here, you can see they're all crunched up. This is for me trying to, the only way I've decided I can get it out is to try to pull it through the lens hole. And I'm hoping if I can get one blade out, it'll be slack enough that I can fight the second blade out the normal way. Because I mean, you can, I, you can't see, but the the gap that these things slide in is is literally the the width of the the parts so you can't pry it open you can't do anything you have to get to this one of the whichever one has the screw or both of them to get this plate out and then once you do that you can get at it because this ends open and this ends open I, I took out the there's a little viewfinder lens cover here just a piece of glass uh, I lifted that out to to keep it out of the way and maybe I was hoping I might be able to get to it from this end um, so yeah I just unhooked one of the tiny little shutter springs 
on this end by taking this pick here and grabbing the end, the very end of the spring on the bottom bottom side away from the on the back side of the camera and poking into the hole to, to gently tickle that end out because the springs look like they're okay I don't know if they'll survive this taken apart but uh, right now if I can if I can manage to save them one less thing that I have to get. Okay. Now I pulled this arm out of here last time. There we go. So once those springs are free, you can actually just slide that copper arm completely out. And it goes back to, well, I'll do another reassembly video, but it goes that way with the gear, the rack side facing towards the back. And uh, it just slides in under a shoulder. There's a little detent, spring detent ball right here. And that's what gives it the clicks in its various open and closed positions. Um, that, that's pretty straightforward. So fighting this thing, what I'm hoping I'm going to do is, I don't know if it'll work. Um, Fish this thing out. All right, I'm gonna wrestle with it and start up again. All right, so I've been wrestling with this thing. I managed to get out that little piece right there, and that piece right there. These are from the uh, these are from the spring end, and after jerking it around enough, I was able to clear that hole and get the screw unscrewed, but there's still another screw in this hole. But uh, by getting this end out, it did give me a little wiggle room, and I've just about got enough room in there that I can start trying to unscrew it. And this is just, this is just absolute butchering this, these shutters. Um, the rest of it actually seems like it's okay. I'm not sure if the housing swells on these or anything from, from that, uh, from those shutters being crumpled up in there. But, oh, there it is. There's a little, another short flathead countersunk slotted screw. So they're both out. This should be able to slide out. Come on. There we go. Alright. So there's your lens, or at least the front of it. Uh, the back end is right there at the back of the film cassette. So if you needed to, unfortunately, the first time I did this was purely to clean the lens, but the only way to do it is to tear the entire thing apart, uh, which which I did much more successfully than this one, um, or at least much more smoothly. And uh, it's it's working fine. Uh, the, I'm still not real happy with the, the sharpness of the photos, but I'm using old film from a trip I took to Europe in, the, in 2003, and the film was old then. So uh, I, I, I'm pretty much burning through what I've got to get some fresh film. And to get this knob off, what do you do? You rotate, so the red dot, the red dot or the red line, we'll, we'll see what happens. Basically, there's a whole bunch of cams going on underneath this thing. There's the uh, there's a cam that interacts. There we go. The red dot towards the rear of the camera. And uh, when I did that, this back edge popped up. 
And what when it's in that position, it releases probably from the cam that controls the film spacing. So as your roll gets bigger on one side, it takes different size, uh, different strokes, so that it maintains the same negative size. Uh, you've also got the the focus knob interacting with the viewfinder over here, and I think there's I think there's one other thing, but I could be wrong. But so you push, you, you rotate it until this red dot is at the rear, and then you grab the focus knob and kind of wiggle and lift. There we go. And there it is. So this thing is going to be the worst part of reassembly. What you got is you've got your focus knob. There's a little spring tab that I think is a, applies tension to the focus knob and keeps it keeps it that nice smooth uh, resistance when you're turning it. This is what are you? This is the focus. Yeah, this is no, no. Your focus parallax cam is here. This is your film feed uh, uh, cam surface. And then down here is a, a gear that actually focuses the lens because the lens is in a threaded threaded barrel. Let me get this cam out of here. The lens is actually mounted on a threaded barrel uh, right in here. And it has this little crown gear on the end of it. So as you as you turn the, the thumb knob on top, you're turning a gear that turns this crown gear right here, which then screws the lens in and out. And that changes your focus. So the first time I took it apart, I wasn't sure I had this in the right position. So I asked, a couple forums and sat and thought and sat and thought and sat and thought and finally I came to the conclusion that I just oh wait this one's different I had to tear it apart to make sure that I had it right and that one yeah it's got to stop when you reassemble it you, you put it at the 8 inch mark which is rotating the knob clockwise clockwise which is then going to rotate this gear clockwise or to the right and when you get there there's actually oh no this one doesn't have it oh boy uh, the other camera I have has a solid stop so all you do is rotate it until it stops, and then you're there. This one has this, this sort of wide portion. Uh, it's probably almost invisible. The, the crown gear has a wide spot on it that's going to act as a stop and prevent, the, prevent this, this top gear from spinning this anymore. It's going to hit that, and there's going to be no next tooth, so that will stop it. There's some brass shavings in this thing. I don't know where they're from exactly. Uh, that's steel. This is, uh, I think it goes that way. This is the cam that, that controls your uh, film advance stroke. This is the lever that actually advances the film. So as this thing Somehow it works. <laughs> this little finger right here runs on that cam under there and moves this up and down, which interacts with this cam surface, which changes how much it strokes. And I think that's about it for taking it apart as far as I've gotten into it. And as far as I usually need to get into it, because I have a feeling that this is going to be fine now. Let's put a little rack back on there and show how it ratchets. All right. So this just slides under there, little spring ball, oops, spring ball, 